Welcome everyone to one more uh, telecom seminar, uh, which is hosted by Technology Novice Institute in Abu Dhabi. Uh, I'm the, uh, Dr. Daniel Da Costa, a principal researcher at CII. And for today, it's a big pleasure uh, to welcome um, Professor Kate Kit Wong uh, from uh, University College London as uh, the speaker of our seminar. And Professor Kate Kit Wong will talk about it, uh, Bruce, uh, fluid antenna systems. And you, you explain us the philosophy, what is co uh, connected, uh, connecting Bruce Lee philosophy in um, Sekishi. So uh, it's, uh, I believe uh, everyone will, you find uh, uh, the talk very interesting, okay? And, and can uh, inspire new works and new research in the team. Okay, but before moving to the talk, uh, let me introduce uh, Professor Kate Kit Wong. Uh, he received the bachelor and the master and the PhD degrees in all in electrical and electronic engineering from Hong Kong University of Science Technology in Hong Kong in 1996, uh, 1998, and 2001, respectively. He is currently a chair professor of wireless communications at the Department of Electronic and Electrical Engineering, University College London in UK. His current research centers around 5G and beyond uh, mobile communications. He is co recipient of the 2020 Premium Award for Best Paper in I IET Electronic Letters, uh, the 2013 IEEE Signal Processing Letters Best Paper Award, uh, the 1000 uh, IEEE VTS Japan Chapter Award at IEEE Vehicle Technology Society. And um, he also co recipient of a few other international best paper awards. He's fellow uh, of IEEE and fellow of IET. He's uh, currently the editor in chief of Wireless Com uh, Communications Letters, IEEE Wireless Communications Letters uh, since 2020. And he's also the subject editor in chief for wireless communications of IET electronic letters since uh, June 2020. So, uh, Professor uh, Kit Kit Wong, again, uh, it's a really a great pleasure for us to have you here. And thank you again for agreeing to give uh, this talk uh, today. Now, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Daniel, uh, for the introduction. And of course, uh, uh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be a speaker uh, uh, for the Telecom Summer Series at the Technology Innovation Institute. Uh, really, really precious to be here. Um, yes, the, 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 uh, today's talk uh, title is Bruce Lee Inspired Free Internet Systems for 6G Technology. I also have a subheading over there, Free Internet Multiple Access, because I actually like to put some emphasis uh, on multi-user communication using such technologies. I believe uh, most of you probably haven't heard about free antenna systems before, um, and that is no surprise because I believe uh, I'm the probably the, the only one of the very few groups uh, in the world actually um, investing uh, our efforts in uh, this type of new technologies. Um, so hopefully after this talk, you will know uh, what's it and then the potential, or you may find that this is interesting as well. So how is it related to Bruce Lee? Um, uh, Bruce Lee is not an RF engineer. He's not a wireless communications researcher, uh, but I do find that there is uh, some sort of parallels um, in his model of uh, a concept uh, to mobile communication technology, which I actually took inspiration from. So certain there's really, really a connection between what you know, he's good at and what I find useful in you know, applying in mobile communication technologies. So right now, probably you don't see the link, but don't worry, hopefully, as I proceed, you will, uh, you will find that there's connection and then everything would make sense in the end. So before I proceed to talk, I'd like to give a shout out to my colleague, uh, Professor Kim Fai Tong. He's my colleague and researcher working uh, together with me on this topic. I'm a theorist, so therefore I am mo uh, mostly focusing on the uh, signal processing side and then the uh, communication theory side of such uh, free antenna systems. 
uh, technology. But while uh, Professor Tong, he is the, um, the researchers who back up the um, hardware design and implementation of such ideas. So in addition to what I'm going to talk about, you know, today, mainly on the theory, in fact, there are research activities in our group which try to implement and realize such concepts. All right. So uh, thank you for him. Um, okay. So, oops. Right. So here's a very quick outline. Okay. So uh, my outline is pretty standard. First of all, I'll talk, you know, a little bit about the challenge of wireless communications. So these, I believe, because it's a telecom seminar series, I assume that most of you uh, probably have the basic uh, wireless communication background. So I would not, you know, spend a lot of time on this, but, you know, just quickly get to a few points which can link to what we're trying to do. Uh, later today. And then later on, then I will talk about free antenna system. What is it and how is it related to Bruce Lee? Then would be I'm going to show you a couple of free radical resources that I have for single user system and multi user system when I apply free antenna technologies. And finally, some results and then conclusion. Of course, I also save a little bit of extra result and depending on whether we have time, I most likely I don't have time. But if I do have time, I probably also talk a little bit about um, a potential problem which I can utilize um, machine learning on uh, in the optimizing for antenna systems as well. But that, you know, if time permitted. Now, yeah, okay, challenges, uh, so, yes. Yeah, you have time, enough time, so. Uh, All right, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah. So, okay, challenges for wise communication. So uh, well, if we are working on wise communication, you, you know, uh, nothing is new here okay so we have limited spectrum so therefore we always like to uh, utilize or reuse the frequency spectrum as many times as possible so that we can accommodate many more users but in that when we do this okay there is going to be a lot of interference so interference is going to be one concern and a concern is multipath feeding right because wireless communication channel is not a dedicated cable or wireline channel so therefore when you um when your antenna emit the signal in the space out in the space uh, it would take multiple different paths across the space and in each of these paths would have in different interaction. Diffraction, refraction, right? Okay, absorption, whatever that is. And then there are a lot of these sort of EM interaction with the environment. So when you try to get your signals at the receive antenna, it would be a mass, okay? So basically superposition of many different sort of random signal coming together. So it, the result is that you will get some sort of a random attenuation in amplitude and random phase shift. So this is all, this is the problem actually get um, RF engineers or wireless communication researchers busy for the past probably 30, 40 years, okay? So people are um, inventing or proposing different technologies just to save the channel. For example, code channel coding, resource allocation, power control, you know, the list goes on and on. But of course, at the same time, okay, the product, the byproduct is that we will always need to increase the processing complexity, okay, in order to um, sort of repair the, uh, the, the, the channel or counteract with the uh, impairments of the channel. At the same time, with all these uh, sort of problems, we also have the challenge because we increase the demand all the time, okay, from 1G to 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. Now, okay, people are talking about moving on to 6G. There are a couple of things that, you know, uh, is pretty famous, okay, uh, or targets or whatever, objectives, okay, you know, when people, you know, are developing, we're developing the 5G technology, for example, we need to, okay, increase the capacity, right, all these sort of EMBB, right, the enhanced mobile broadband, and then also this URLC uh, uh, um, important use case because you know, we talk about uh, the latency would be would need to be very very small, and then the reliability would need to be very very high. Um, you know, for certain applications. And but for me, okay, I do have a particular love in massive connectivity problems. So because I believe that. Um, you know, this is just a personal interest, really. Okay, so yeah, there are a lot of different interesting use cases, but I always feel like, okay, massive connectivity, if I can solve it, that would be, that would be brilliant. So that's that's why, for example, a, a few years ago, uh, I had, I particularly interested, I was particularly interested in college radio type of problems, because I like to look for technologies that can make mobile radios to be so intelligent and somewhat, even they call, 
they compete with each other, they could somehow still uh, get very, very decent performance. So that, that's, that's, you know, my love on massive connectivity actually started even when I was a PhD student more than 20 years ago, when I start uh, my research in PhD and then when a lot of people working on uh, single user MIMO and then I focus on uh, multi-user MIMO. That's also, you know, uh, because of that, that, uh, that, that main interest. So of course we have a lot of these uh, problem. So how the uh, wireless communication will actually handle okay, these sort of situations. So there are a lot of uh, fancy technology ha that have been developed, okay. Many technology need, you know, deserve a lot of credits, okay. But to me, um, in the modern history of mobile communications, the major, okay, or the most celebrated um, uh, wireless communication technology has to be MIMO or multi or MIMO. Okay, you can have different opinion. You, maybe some people will say, okay, turbo coding. Some people will say, you know, other, right? Okay, interface alignment, whatever. Okay, but in my in my heart, it's always going to be MIMO and multi or MIMO. So, um, and there are three giants that I like to uh, uh, shout out uh, to them as well because these these are really really. You can say, okay, my main idols, okay, in wireless communication. Okay, the first one, uh, one, one of them uh, would be Alan Moti. Alan Moti actually in 1998, I believe he um, uh, invent uh, the what we call uh, Alan Moti space time codes uh, right now. And then that, that actually starts the major interest of 3G technology. This is the first technology for MIMO, which is being introduced in mobile communication, I believe. And then of course, um, it is important that we should not forget that MIMO, okay, who invented the first person? It has to be Professor Paraj from Stanford University because he filed a patent, even though at that time he didn't call it uh, MIMO, he called it DTDR, I think is um, um, directional transmission and then diverse, okay, yeah, diversity reception, something like that, DTDR, okay, that was the uh, technology that he actually filed the pattern, but actually, if you look at the pattern, it is actually describing the idea of MIMO that we have today, so, you know, he is the father of MIMO, I would call it, call him like that, and of course, uh, the main interest of MIMO, and it becomes so massive, that has to, we have to thank to uh, Dr. Jerry Fascini from uh, uh, Bell Labs, okay? In 1998, in his paper, he actually created a technology called BRAS, uh, BLAS, okay? So Bell Labs, a layered space-time architecture. So there is this sort of, because of his work, okay, that start all these waves of wireless communications uh, uh, interest research in MIMO, okay? And we are still, you know, the mobile communication system is still being influenced and highly impacted by MIMO technologies, right? So yes, 3G, okay, MIMO start uh, being introduced before G and then multi of MIMO also being considered. And then now 5G, massive MIMO, okay, still MIMO, we're still talking about MIMO. So how about 6G, 7G, 8G, whatever, I believe MIMO is still there, right? This is just a core technology that you cannot get away with, why? because MIMO can create bandwidth out of space or out of nothing, you can say, okay. So that, that, that's, um, that's precious, right? Okay, so MIMO is so powerful. So why is it so effective? And how is that related to the topic, free antennas that we're going to talk about today, okay? So MIMO is uh, very popular. It's being used for, uh, well, almost any mobile communication uh, stands now. So Wi-Fi, okay, AU2.11N, AC, and 3G, HSPA, WiMAX, LTE, 5G, and many more standards, okay? Okay, so they, they, they are actually using, using, using MIMO. Why MIMO is so powerful is because the idea is diversity. When you have multiple antenna, place multiple antenna, different antenna at different space will see completely different environment. Okay, if they are, uh, are located uh, far enough, okay, of course, if they see something different, which means that, okay, this antenna may see a good channel and another, another antenna may see a bad channel, but okay, if you get a lot of these antenna, then the chance that all the antennas see a terrible channels is less, this probability is less. This is the major uh, uh, idea behind this technology, diversity. We have diversity, we improve reliability. And reliability can be translated into capacity as well. So, of course, uh, more interestingly, 
when you have multiple antennas, and then you can actually apply into multi-user scenario because then you will see that different users see different spatial channel and then we can exploit that and then to realize multiple access. So that's why MIMO is so, so attractive. Um, MIMO is very successful. It's still very, very successful. Um, but then do we need to think of something different for MIMO? Well, maybe yes, maybe no, okay. Um, no, because MIMO is so powerful and then we can still that MIMO can contribute so much in uh, wireless communication systems, okay? And then, you know, we can, this is evidence by seeing, okay, from 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, and in the future, you will see that the base station, number of antennas in the base station keep increasing, okay? One, two, from one to two, to four, to eight, to now 64, and then this number will still go up, okay? We believe it will definitely go up, okay, when the uh, cost for uh, antenna is cheaper and then the signal processing can cope with all this complexity then it would you know, just continues to go up you know there's no doubt about that okay but the same cannot be said if we look at the mobile station size let's say your device your your, your phone your tablet well the number of antennas is still increasing okay from one to probably two to now probably four antennas okay you know in in, in all, uh, the four corners okay but we don't see the same increase in the mobile station. Why? Okay, well, there are a lot of reasons. The first obvious reason is because we don't have enough size, okay? Base station, you have a lot more size, okay? But mobile device, you know, it's not like you want to have a bigger phone and then you have a bigger phone because it's not very convenient, okay? User doesn't want it, okay? So therefore, we are limited by the physical size of a mobile device, yes, when we move up the frequency band, the size antenna would get smaller. So it may be more reasonable or practical to fit many more antenna in a mobile device. But still, the problem is that we still need, okay, number of two spacing between the antenna. So therefore this would limit how much, uh, how many antennas that you can pack in a small area, okay? So lambda for two spacing rule makes a lot of sense. Because we, when we like to place multiple antennas, we want them to see independent signals, right? Statistically, so that okay, we can take advantage, full advantage of diversity. So everything looks fine, okay. But I'm uh, some very um, picky, let's let's say researcher. I always like to say mm, scrutinize and say, can we do something different? Okay, can we do something different? So that actually leads to. Um, the concept of free antennas that I'm speaking today, okay? So in particular, what I do is I try to take inspiration from Bruce Lee's philosophy, okay? So, okay, who is Bruce Lee, okay, by the way? So I believe that I'm old enough, I of course know who is Bruce Lee, but if you're so young, so you may not know Bruce Lee, maybe, okay? So, but okay, if, if you play, um, when you were young, if you play Street Fighter. So there was a one character actually tried to imitate uh, Bruce Lee, that's Fei Long, okay? So in case, if you play Street Fighter and then you know sort of rough idea of Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee is actually a martial artist uh, or many people believe that he probably would, is the greatest uh, martial artist of all time. Of course, he's also a movie star, okay? That's why he's, uh, his name is really, it's popularized, okay, a lot of people know it, but of course, you know, he dies many years now, so no, probably, uh, if you haven't heard about his name, it's no surprise as well, okay, so, okay, so Bruce Lee, what he did, okay, so in one of his TV show, well, remember, he's a muscle artist, he actually invented his own muscle art system, he called Jikundo, okay, Jikundo, all right, that's okay, so let me just try to use my pen, so yeah, so basically, Jikun Do, okay, yes. this is his muscle art system, okay? And in the TV show, he actually shared with the audience what he thinks about this idea, okay? And in this TV show, this is the Long Street, okay, air uh, September 1971, okay? You can actually go to YouTube and then you can find this uh, footage and then you, you probably can hear what he said about this. But now, let me just try to read out what he said, okay? And then you try to see whether you can... Hmm, take inspiration from what he said and then link it to what is communication, for example, like how I did it. All right, so he said, empty your mind, 
be formless, shapeless, like water. If you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, and it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now, water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. A lot of people try to summarize what he said by simply saying, be water, my friend. This is, in fact, a very, very good summary of his philosophy. Basically, when I heard about this and then when I tried to... So... Um, the feeling, the greatest feeling I have is, okay, be water, my friend. What does that mean? It means that be adaptive, be flexible. That's what I get. And in fact, he also said that be like water, making its way through cracks. Do not be assertive, but adjust to the object and you shall find a way around or through it. Okay. So from that, then I, I, I remember, you know, I had a, a I had a constant uh, conversation with my colleague uh, Kenneth Tong. You know, you know, he's now uh, you know helping with me in the hardware design implementation of such idea. But when we talk about this, you know, the main thing is that we realize, okay, then can antenna be flexible? Can antenna be water? Something like that, okay? Because when well, of course, his reply was positive. He would say, okay, well, why not? Okay. Yeah, okay. So in fact, it doesn't have to be water. It can be conductive so solution, all right? So in fact, he, he you know, uh, after further study, he can even say that, okay, dielectric uh, material can, you know, can also be, uh, be a rating, rating the element. And then we can make everything flexible for antenna. So then when this idea get into my mind, I realized, that, okay, if antenna can be flexible, what does that mean? What's the implication? Well, I believe this has a strong implication because why MIMO is so powerful is because we would like to prepare um, and put an additional antenna so that it take an additional observation of the space of the channel. And because of that, that create diversity. So, but if I have antenna which can be movable or find a ray through the object and adjust then this antenna may be able to observe even within a small space also different channel environment. This by itself is big volume about diversity. So therefore, I believe that the space diversity without lambda over two limitation is possible if we have antenna like this. So therefore, okay, one concept, this is a, this is concept, this is a, we visualize what may look like a free antenna system is that what if I have kind of space, I have these sort of free radiating element. This is some sort of maybe ionized water, maybe a liquid metal, for example. Of course, you know, different materials, you know, it requires a separate research, okay, to, to, to study uh, what is the best material uh, depending on many different characteristics, okay? But we can imagine what if we have some sort of liquid material right there, and this is the radiating element or the antenna. And, but we can actually shift them, okay, shift it, okay, over a particular defined uh, region, okay, using, for example, in this case, maybe we're proposing, well, perhaps we can use a digital pump, okay, and then we can actually mobilize the antenna in, in a small space, okay. So now, the, then the question is, yes, flexibility is everything. Does it actually unlock massive diversity in a small space? If we have small space, does it really give us anything? Okay, so here I am providing a snapshot of uh, some sort of uh, popular channel modeling. Let's say if we have two lambda space, let's say this is two lambda. Okay, so what is a typical fading envelope that we will see? Okay, May, okay. a typical fading envelope would be like this. So, okay, the signal is getting bad and getting worse, right? Like this and then getting better like this. Okay, this is where we say, deep fade, okay? Because of the possibility of suffering from those deep fades, that's why wireless communication system need a lot of advanced technology, for example, channel coding, um, beam forming, right? Resource allocation, right? Spread, spread, whatever that is, okay? So many different techniques just to come in and then to avoid, okay? Or to fix the issue when this deep phase is happening. But if we have space diversity using free antenna, 
it may be possible that okay we see the entire fading envelope and then we can avoid this okay because we don't have to communicate at this point we can switch the antenna into this location okay and then we can get the best benefit of the uh, channel so and another thing that i see is okay defade this is defade this is terrible but from the bottom of the defade to get out of it maybe you don't need a lot of space you don't need have lambda you only need probably one tenth of lambda remember what is defade defade meaning that this is a very narrow sharp drop of the fading envelope what does that mean the deeper the fade the narrower the fade that means to get out of it okay you don't need that many space okay even small space like 0.1 lambda 0.2 lambda you will be able to get out of the fade so that's why i am kind of boost with this sort of observation i believe we don't need a lot of space but but to um if we allow the antenna to shift in position we would be able to retrieve so much diversity so that's actually the whole motivation of this talk but before i present the results that i have um i also like to mention that okay um yes in in terms of the communication theory side we probably are the only research group right now in the world that try to invest on this idea and then try to do something but this sort of free antenna concept is not entirely new in the antenna and propagation community so it's not like okay i tell you something okay you just have to uh sort of listen to my words and say okay to to believe this is uh doable or not doable and in fact this whole line of work is backed up or supported by many many different research groups around the world in antenna and propagation community when they actually start looking into using liquid materials for antennas since probably 10 15 years ago okay so if you talk to them they might say okay that's new but that's not that new because if people start working on this year 2000 right okay year 2013 something like that okay so um i list uh, a number of uh publication okay by others okay not by us there are maybe one or two papers i list here is by us okay these these two are by us but all the rest other papers are by other people okay so and then um you will see that you know people are using liquid metal using um uh, ionized water using a lot of different sort of liquid to um um design reconfigurable uh, antennas okay so a good summary okay could be fine from the first publication so if you're interested you can you can pick up and read okay that is the paper by researchers from uh university Liverpool. That published just recently last year liquid antenna past present in future where you can find a good literature review of liquid antennas okay past present and then uh, what they think would be um would become in reality in the future all right so there are also a lot of other many many more papers uh sort of uh, investigating on using liquid materials for antennas so free light antenna should not be a shock okay to um to people like us working in the communication theory side okay but i happen to be uh the person who find a lot of love in this and try to see okay what does it mean okay in wireless communications design okay now okay so this is really the main body of the talk now okay so um i'm a theorist so therefore i cannot consider uh too many practical uh, uh, uh sort of limitation in this uh in this system okay so therefore as a first step what i consider is a system like this okay probably i have space i call it w lambda space okay lambda is the wavelength so w is the normalized size of the free antenna and then i have these sort of free radiating element which can shift okay to one of n position one two three n position okay i can have n position to choose where my antenna or my free antenna can stay there and then take and receive the signal okay n is fixed this number can be large can be small okay it depends on the practical limitations okay so yeah and of course 
And when I um, model it, I assume that the antenna is like a point antenna, okay? So I don't consider the physical size of the actual radiative element, which could be a limitation um, 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 in my analysis, okay? But, you know, hopefully in the future, in the near future, I can look at this again and then I can improve the model to make it even more uh, reasonable at the moment, but, you know, it has to be the way it is, okay? I assume a very, very idealistic uh, point um, antenna okay and then these point antenna can switch its position from um, uh, 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 one of these end positions I call it port okay I call it port I don't call it position I call it port for some reason right so it is important that okay so um, I have W lambda this this space size it, it cannot be very large because to be realistic maybe two lambda one lambda, one and a half lambda, whatever that is, okay, it, it cannot be very, very large. And this number can be large, okay, because it depends on the resolution, right? If we're using sort of, uh, uh, um, so sort of software control to pump, yet the resolution of N could be, could be really, really large, okay? But the thing is that this channel that we see from the antenna, G1, G2, Gn, because of the small space W lambda, they are highly correlated. So I need to have a way of modeling the strong spatial correlation between all these channels. So therefore, I'm using this sort of generalized uh, spatial correlation model, uh, which tries to link all these channels together through a, a spatial correlation parameter mu. Okay. And after some analysis, I can actually uh, work out, oh, how should I choose this spatial correlation parameter depending on the size? Okay. So, um, well, I published a paper on, you know, explaining how do we choose uh, that, okay? So basically, uh, what it does is, okay, when I look at this size W lambda, okay, what is the expected spatial correlation I should experience between any two ports, okay? And then I try to use this uh, condition to work out what is the best value of mu, and then I actually find it like this, okay? This will be useful in my analysis. All right, so, okay. Now, in the single user system, it's pretty simple. So I have an antenna, I have n position, okay? One, two, three, all the way to n. I simply need to choose the one which has the largest channel gain, okay, yeah? If assuming that I can always do that, so then we study the outage probability of this sort of single user free antenna system. Okay. And then we managed to derive the expression for that. This is outage probability when we're given a target. Okay. So what is outage probability? Outage probability is the probability that your resulting signal to noise ratio is smaller than a target as an uh, SNR. Okay. So if these probability is small, which means that the performance is good, okay? If the, this probability is high, the performance is not so good. So therefore, these uh, play an important role in, um, in illustrating the actual achievable performance of this system. And outage probability, in fact, has a lot of connection to ergodic capacity. If you want to work out ergodic capacity, you can, you can do it uh, through the outage probability as well. Right. And then there are some also other this sort of average fade duration or um, uh, average fade duration and, and also these, these, these sort of uh, 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 fading rate as well. So all this can be linked to somehow the outage probability as well. So this is uh, like a, a main performance metric. So um, this is an expression. So you probably cannot see a lot from that. But one observation I can I can say is, in fact, it can be easily uh, shown that, okay, if the number of ports, this, this is the number position, that also means the resolution of the free antenna is large. The outage probability can converge to zero, okay? That means that if you, even you have a small space, let's say your, your space is fixed, as long as have a very, really high resolution of this antenna, in fact, you can suppress, okay, reduce outage probability to be arbitrarily small. Okay, at a given uh, signal to noise ratio target. So this is this, this is a really powerful result. But to me, free antenna system is is power is particularly obvious when we talk about multi user scenarios. Okay, um, in my more than twenty years uh, research career, 
I somehow have strong, strong love and interest in multi-user communication. Single-user system, I'm not that uh, uh, interest. Okay. <laughs> um, yes, I'm also interested in that. But multi-user system, you give me a different vibe, a different sort of uh, 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 yeah, different vibe and different different feeling. Okay. So therefore, whatever technology that I'm trying to develop, I always think of okay, what's the implication when, when I use this sort of technology in multi-user system, right? So for free internet system, I find that wow, that could be really really useful. All right. So, for example, I'm showing a, uh, a system like this. I have two antenna, base station antenna. Okay, they could be from the same base station, but just two separate distributed base station antenna. Base station antenna one try to send a signal to user one. Base station antenna two transmit the signal to user two. They are communicating on the same time. Okay, on the same frequency band at the same time. So therefore, they would overlap, right? In, you know, in in the same channel. But now, if we see that I have a space like two lambda here, and I try to illustrate, what do I see? Okay, what do I see? So let's say this is the envelope of the uh, decider signal. Okay, like this. Okay, like that. At the same time, the user two signal would have. An independent okay fading envelope right that one the red one now the good news is that okay if i can observe the entire fading envelope for the decider user and then the interference i can it is very likely that i can find a particular point in space where the interference is suffering from a defect for example like this one and the decider signal is not suffering from a defect then I can choose this position or choose this port to communicate, okay? And then in that case, the interference just disappear. It vanishes naturally, okay? I don't need to do anything except switching the antenna at the right, right port, right position. Similarly, okay, whatever I'm doing for user one, it doesn't affect what you should be doing in user two. So user two basically doing something identical okay you just need to look at the fading envelope one is yourself the other one is your interference and then go to the one where the interference suffer from a defect and then when your signal is not then this would be the position when you believe that the interference would just disappears naturally okay then in this case yes free antenna simply choosing the port okay no power control no advanced coding no beam forming, nothing, right? And then you just basically tune it at the right place. Then the interference naturally disappear because this is a fading phenomenon, okay? So this idea, in fact, you can extend it to any number of users, any number of users. For example, let's say this is um, 10 user system. So if you look at user one, then you have nine uh, interferers, right? But all these nine interferers, in fact, they can sum together to give you one single interference envelope, okay? Then, okay, the ID could uh, operate in the same way. So this is illustrated in this model, I call it fast free antenna multiple access. So basically, um, at a particular user U, okay, and a particular position of the free antenna, so we can always write it like this, okay, your decider signal, and then the sum interference and then the noise, okay? Imagine if we, okay, we ignore the noise because this is obviously is interference limited uh, system. And then we just look at these and then these, okay? Look at this ratio. If, I'm just saying if, okay? If you ask me how, I probably don't know, okay? I'll explain this later on. So if somehow you can measure the ratio at each port, okay? The ratio between the signal energy to the side of signal energy to the indifferent, to some interference energy, okay, for all the port. And then, then you can always switch to the right one to maximize that signal to interference ratio, some kind of signal to interference ratio. Then we can do free antenna multiple access. We can do multiple access. And why I'm highlighting the fact that this is fast, because if you do this, you need to do it like uh, on a 
symbol by symbol basis, okay? Because you're talking about the sum interference signal, okay? So um, I'm still carrying out research to see how this is achievable, okay? Accessing this sort of ratio is very, very challenging. So if you ask me now, today, I cannot answer you, okay? I don't know, okay? But at least I can say that I believe it is possible, okay? It is possible. You just need to design some sort of um, coding design so that you code certain structure in the time domain. So when you actually at the receiver to look at the, the, the receive signal on a given symbol instant, you may be able to infer which port give you the best port. And then you may be able to switch that and, and then do the communications afterwards. But anyway, this is a whole new, whole new uh, uh, territory. So I can't really offer uh, more insight to this. But anyway, in this analysis right now, I'm assuming that this is possible. And then I simply like to look into, okay, then what is outage probability? What is the achievable performance of such a system? Okay, and then I consider the outage probability when a signal to interest ratio is less than a target. Okay, and well, after some sort of uh, 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 analysis, you get an expression something like this. But again, one very, very important observation is that if we increase n, we increase the resolution, again, the out outage probability can be made arbitrarily small, which confirm the interference immunity of uh, such a system. But of course, okay, that could be a problem um, um, if we don't even know how to we achieve this system. So therefore, recently, I also focus on another version of free antenna multiple access when I consider this as, okay, slow free antenna multiple access, slow, okay. Why I, could, I, I call it slow? Because in that case, I'm not actually working out the instantaneous ratio between the uh, decided signal energy, some interference energy. I actually consider the signal power divided by the interference, some interference power. So therefore, this, you can measure it, right? This, you can measure it, okay? This is a standard kind of signal to interest and noise ratio, depending only on the channel. It doesn't depend on the symbol, the, the signal on a, a symbol by symbol basis, okay? So you can do it. And then in this case, when you find the best port, then you stay on this port until, okay, until the channel changes, the channel fading, the fading envelope changes, and then, then you need to choose a different port. Otherwise, once you change it, you don't need to change it again. Okay, until the channel changes. So we believe these idea is also possible, right? So I'm showing you some fading envelope here. Okay, let's say I have two lambda space for a particular user. Okay, uh, the decided user is this one. Then I have, let's say two interferer. Okay, so therefore in this system, this is a free user system. Okay, so this is interference, this is interference. So I can still choose a port where Interference one in defay, interference two in defay. So therefore, you can still get the signal to noise ratio like 17 dB. So which probably will be good enough for this free user system. So if we increase the number of user, let's say this is a four user system. Yeah, this the concept can still work. Okay, this is your decided signal. This is the interference one, two, three. Well, they can okay in 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 the defay or at the same time. And then you can tune it to this port. And again, this into noise ratio, interference ratio could be reasonable. And then you can still maintain uh, uh, multiple access for a four user system. So it looks like mm, this, this, this concept seems to work still. Okay. And that's why I try to uh, work out the outage probability for this system. Okay. The fast version and then the slow version for multiple access. Of course, the um, analytical results looks different. Um, and then, of course, okay, we 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 will be uh, interested to to find out in the numerical results, is it significant or is it not? Okay. Uh, all right, all right, okay. Well, I can see there's a there's a question. I'll I'll try to answer it later on. Okay, uh, I'll I'll come back to to your question uh, later on. Right. Okay. So now, 
uh, of course, okay, I also done some analysis for the multiplexing gain. So uh, without going too deep into the multiplexing gain analysis, so what I like to mention is that multiplexing gain, what does that mean? This means the capacity scaling. If multiplexing gain is two, which means that I achieve my network, achieve a capacity scaling two. Okay, so basically meaning two times the capacity of a single user system. If M is 10, okay, if I achieve multiplexing gain like 10, that means that I my network now has 10 times the capacity of a single user system, right? So this is an important performance metric. Now, let's go through some numerical results, okay? This is a single user system, all right? And this is N. That means that this is the um, resolution of the free antenna, okay? So W is the size, okay? So when W is 0.2, which means that I have a very, very small size, okay, 0.2 lambda. W is 0.5, meaning half lambda, okay? One lambda, two lambda, five lambda space, okay, of this antenna, okay? So within this space, okay, I can have 10 position to, 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 to select the best port, or I can even have 100 position to select the port, right? Of course, accommodating larger number of ports would be more challenging in practice, okay, in the practical design, but okay, uh, we don't care about that for now, okay, but we just want to see how the performance actually scales with these sort of parameters. Now, I also provide some horizontal lines, okay, which provide the marker for the performance of a multi antenna system. For example, this one, two antenna MLC. So I assume that I have two antenna. Um, this is uh, large enough, okay, so that the receive the signal envelope is completely independent, okay. And after these two signal, I do maximum ratio combining to get my resultant signal, okay. And then the outage probability is this one, okay, two antenna. I can increase the number of antenna here, three antenna, four antenna. So this is four antenna results, six antenna results, eight antenna results, nine antenna results, okay. So this one, if I have nine antennas, they are all independent antennas, okay, have internet in, in independent channel fading. Then it does maximum ratio combined to maximize the signal to noise ratio and then to get the outage probability. Then interestingly, okay, two observations. One observation we can see is if the size is so small, okay, the performance is not so good, okay? The free antenna, yeah. If the size is really, really so small, yes, if you increase the number of ports, you can bring down the outage probability, but it would be, the decrease will be very, very slow, okay? Because the size is so small, okay? But if we allow a lot more space, let's say half lambda, the results, so much improved, okay? So now, now, now you see that sort of, steepest look of going down okay the outage probability and then we can see that these just have lambda space we can beat four antenna okay we can beat four antenna mlc six antenna eight antenna mlc but of course you just need to have a sufficiently large okay uh, a number of ports for example right here probably you need um 150 Ports, okay. You need 150 position with the within this very, very small space. Let's say half lambda space, okay. Well, practically, whether this is achievable is a different story. But but this is what the theory says, okay. If you can fit that many ports, even half lambda, brilliant, okay. Then of course it would be more reasonable, okay. If it's one lambda, okay. So then you probably need only. 10, 20, 30, maybe 40 port, yeah? You only need 40 positions, then you can get very, very uh, a good outage probability getting actually close to eight or even nine antenna MLC, okay? But of course, if we see that, if we keep increasing the size of the antenna, um, you get improvement, but the improvement is less and less, okay? So there's going to be the diminishing uh, return. So it looks like in a single user case, free antenna system deliver very, very promising diversity, okay? And then we can actually bring down the algae probability so well that it can even exceed maximum ratio combining for many antenna system. 
Well, have a multi-user system, okay? For multi-user system, okay, let's say fast free antenna, uh, uh, free antenna multiple access, which means that we need to track on a symbol by symbol basis the, um, the peak for the signal to entrance ratio, okay? If we are able to do that and then switch always to the best, what happened, yeah? Now I'm showing multiplexing game, okay? So I'm considering three different system one system is when you have 10 users in the system when you have 50 users in the system when you have 100 users in the system sharing the same spectrum okay so we can see that if we increase the number of users in the system the multiplexing game actually is improving okay yeah because the multiplexing game depending on how many users that you fit into the system right if let's say if, if i have 10 users in the system even each of this user uh achieve the best outage probability performance which is outage probability equals zero then the multiplexing game will be 10 right because you only have 10 users the maximum capacity scaling you get is 10. so therefore the capacity scaling depending on the number of users that you accommodate on the same um channel okay on the same channel so therefore we see that trend when you we increase when we pack more users in the system the multiplexing game could improve okay but of course these strong multiplexing gain is only achievable if we allow the number of ports to increase to be extremely extremely large number for example these really need let's say thousand in the thousand you need to have like thousand number of ports okay in a small space in order to achieve that okay um but if you we say okay okay how about 500 okay this is a more reasonable number you still get 40 yeah 40 multiplexing gain 40 which means that if you have 100 system 100 users in the system we get multiplexing in 40 we don't get 100 40 100 because the outage outage probability for each user is not zero okay but then you still get the capacity scaling like 40 times the single user system, right? So therefore, well, there, there you know, it, it, it does um, uh, illustrate a huge potential uh, there, okay? And of course, what we expect is that if we increase the size of the antenna for each uh, user, okay, you would have some gain. For example, this is 0.2 space. This is 0.5 space. Uh, no, no, no. Okay. Oh, well, this is 0.5 space. Yeah, this is 0.5. This is 0.2 space. This is one, two, and five. So you will see that if the free antennas, the size is so small, the capacity scaling is not going up. You know, it's, it's suffering. Okay, because uh, uh, it, it's, it's not be very impressive. So you need to have at least half lambda to have decent capacity scaling. And if it's one lambda, it's even better but if you go beyond one lambda so the return will be de de uh, diminishing okay so this is crazy number right because we're talking about well 50 60 70 80 that's the sort of capacity scaling but again the assumption is that we need to track on a single by single basis the single to interest ratio which is still unknown whether we can do it okay even though i i have a belief that this is possible okay but i don't i don't yet know how to do it Okay, so how about we look at a more reasonable system, slow free antenna multiple access, where we are packing three user, four user, and five user in the system. Then what is the uh, multiplexing thing that we can we can do? Okay, well if you increase the number of ports for the antenna, if the resolution is large enough, we will see that okay, yeah, we pack free user in the system, we actually get multiplexing gain free yeah so it's like perfect okay so we actually can deal with free users sharing the same spectrum achieving the maximum multiplexing gain if we can have about 200 for example 200 ports okay for each uh, free antenna well if we want to go for four user in the system achieving the limit okay let's say four capacity scaling okay then you will need 1000 quite a lot more okay resolution and then you will need to go to like these sort of okay maybe uh, 7000 ports okay for each 
Okay, the resolution is like crazy, right? But this is how you can then actually get the multiplexing gain of five, okay? Then allowing us to share five users all on the same uh, radio channel. So it's possible, but we just need to drive up the resolution of the free antenna, okay? Yeah. Now there's uh, more users, so I'm not going to talk about uh, those users, but I think there's one um, key question that we should be asking ourselves. For example, in my case, when I done this uh, uh, research and then I get this result, on one hand, I'm really happy. I'm really pleased because I haven't seen anything like this, okay, in the entire literature, okay, that allow us to share the same frequency resources to like 100 users, 50 users, okay? And the complexity in terms of signal processing probably is okay, right? Because you're just switching the position of the antenna. It doesn't need, um, let's say, pin forming, for example. It doesn't need um, a lot of fancy resource allocation, power control. It doesn't need that, okay? And whatever that you do for a particular user, it doesn't affect the other user as well. So it's pretty, the user are decoupled, okay? So they don't need to know what the signal processing is being done for other user, but you can still uh, achieve this multiple access. So I can see a lot of um, uh, original sort of uh, attraction in these techniques, okay? And I haven't seen this uh, uh, in the literature. But at the same time, I also see a big, big weakness, I would say, which is that looks to be promising, except that we do need N to be extremely large yeah we need n to be extremely large is it really possible yeah that's the thing is it really possible yeah for single user system that's fine we don't need n to be very large okay so n could be like 10 yeah then you get four antenna mlc so well that's probably is good enough right so if you, you you get like 20 okay port you get like six antenna MLC. So single user system, free antenna system, no problem. We don't have this question. It's deliver promising results. It can exceed or meet, okay, a large number of antenna system with MLC, which is new, okay. Nobody has ever achieved this before. So this is great. But for the multi-user system, the promising result is kind of a little bit shaky because we do need N to be extraordinarily large, which some people may even say, wow, that's useless, okay? We don't expect that is achievable. So that's why um, we are trying to address that. Have we addressed that already? Um, I, I would say not exactly, but we are going into this direction and then we are having some light, okay? We are seeing some light, we are seeing that it seems to be possible, okay? So one idea is that we have, of course, okay, I'm not the designer for these antenna structures, so I probably wouldn't be able to answer you a lot of these RF side practical question on that. But I still like to show that sort of architecture to you just to illustrate a possibility, okay? That you will see that, okay, yeah, maybe it is possible, indeed possible to have a large end for free antenna system. This is one example architecture of free antenna system, which is like this. I have a tube, okay? The rating element is like this. I can move it, okay? Using electronic pumps, which is software controlled, okay? I can actually shift it. I can shift it almost anywhere because, you know, look. So the, the resolution could be really, really very high. Why? Because, um, um, yeah, the resolution of the pump could be really, really high, yeah? I can have like 10 bits, okay, for the electronic pumps. Then I could have like thousands ports right there, okay? But now the thing is, usually when we say we have a port, do we have a physical connection? If we need a physical connection to get a port, that is not possible. Even 100 would be like crazy, okay? So that's why in this particular example, architecture what we do is that we don't we don't we don't connect port here we don't do this okay we don't okay what we do is we have a uh, uh, substrate or you know encapsulate all these architecture and we have only one port on one side 
So what we're doing is that, okay, we can shift this, no problem. We can shift it anywhere we want. This basically, okay, when the signals comes in, it would create a diffraction from the radius element. This refraction would propagate using this surface, surface waves sort of uh, technology to this port. And this port actually take the signal, okay? So effectively, what is what it does? Effective, what it does is that as these radiated element changes position, it would get a different signal, right? Seen different channel, and it, it would get the signal then finally reaching to the port. Okay, so the idea here is one port, but effectively is performing like many many ports. Okay, using this sort of surface wave technology. Okay. So wave comes in, hit the radiative element, and then react with a diffraction pattern. This diffraction pattern propagate along a well-designed surface to the port, the port take the signal, okay? So we don't really need physical port to connect here. We basically need only one, okay? And this can freely uh, switch to any position, all right? So we're doing this, and then we have a conference paper published uh, uh, in, in, in this idea. Um, and that probably it, okay? So, um, okay, maybe I'm used to uh, two minutes to wrap, to, to provide me, uh, to five you some extra uh, simulation results. That results is about using machine learning, where I would like to know where to switch, which one is the best one. Uh, because n could be very large, okay, but I don't want to estimate all the, I don't want to know all the channel envelope before I switch. If I need to know all the envelope when n is large, I still need to do a lot of estimation. I don't want that, okay. Imagine n is 1000, how can I estimate all, know all the 1000 fading envelope before I switch? So therefore, I would like to see what if I only know a, a small number. And then I use the strong spatial correlation and then using machine learning techniques to guess which one is the best and then to deliver the promising performance. This is what, uh, what we did as well, but only for single user system at the moment. For multi-user system, we're still struggling with trying to, try, trying to do that, uh, but you know, hopefully given time, we will be able to address that. So um, well, I'll just show you a couple of results. Um, yes, okay, yeah, for example, I have 50 ports but I only observe a small number, let's say five port. I only observe 10, I only observe two. What happened? Using different machine learning techniques, it looks like that we can actually improve the selection, okay, improve the selection. But of course, we're not entirely happy with the result yet. The result shows that we have improvement, but we believe that, you know, uh, even uh, the application of machine learning, we can probably do, do things uh, uh, in a better way, which we also, you know, further investigate. But that probably it, okay? Uh, I'm not going to go through uh, these, uh, these points now. So basically, uh, hopefully by now, you know that I did, okay, take inspiration from Bruce Lee, okay? So it's not like just arbitrary stuff. I do, I do have a strong feeling about his martial arts system. Uh, be water, my friend, and then I actually utilize it uh, up to um, sort of design this sort of free antenna system and then study uh, the uh, implication of such system. So uh, we are working very hard uh, these days, but there's still so much to work on and uh, very, very challenging. So uh, there are a small number of propagation that we managed to uh, get out uh, so far. And then the, if you're interested, feel free to uh, read those uh, uh, paper and you will see that, okay, all the papers is from ourselves, okay? So, but I, hopefully there will be other people working on that and then in the next few years you will see uh, uh, there are people who also believe in this idea but let's see what happens so okay so that's all for me okay um i remember there are a couple of questions thank you. um thank you well, maybe uh, maybe i should uh, answer that uh now thanks very much talk. yeah thank you for um, the talk and uh actually i also hope that you will not be the only one working on this uh, research field. <laughs>
Yeah, you feel lonely about this, okay? So if, if, you, if you become the only group to do that, you feel like, okay, what's yeah. that? Okay, <laughs> maybe meaningless. All okay. right, so I can see, uh, let's say, Bin Lil, okay, has a question. He, he yes. uh, earlier asked me um, uh, how to control the position of liquid antenna. Um, and a single liquid antenna, you can have multiple. Oh, okay, yes, okay. So let me just, uh, for example, go to uh, just, just a picture. <clears throat> okay, so um, let's say, of course, this may not be the actual architecture that we have, but let's say this is one simple architecture that people may use. So that would be, um, you, you have, you actually, these two end, you have an electronic pump. The pump pump air, of course, because these uh, radiated element is a physical object that you can actually shift by, you know, changing the air pressure from both sides. Then in that case, you can then control that. Okay, so you you basically using electronic device to control that, and then uh, we we did that already. Okay, for some very very simple system, and then I think Kenneth, my my uh, colleague, actually he has a he had a YouTube uh, uh, showing how this is done. But in that free antenna design, he built. It's only trying to reconfigure the frequency. So therefore, he, he that actually changed the size of the fluid in the tube rather than the position of the tube. Okay, so it's, it's something different. But that, that shows you the idea. So you actually can physically change it. So uh, is it possible, for example, is it possible to have one tube have multiple that sort of fluid element? Yeah. This would be harder. Okay, because when you have object, what if they touch each other, they probably could merge. Okay, so it's, it's a kind of a different, but of course, we are also working on another concept called fluid MIMO, where we consider probably in a phone, we have one free antenna, two, three, four, four separate free antenna that each one can move. Okay, but they don't connect to, connect to each other because if they connect to each other, is possible, but is uh, is another thing which I actually I think I have a recent paper. Um, I don't know whether I put it in the end here. Uh, yeah, I didn't put it there, but there's there's a paper. I uh, is called uh, the title is Bruce Lee's inspired uh, free internet system for six G. Yeah, and and then six uh, research topics or potential for six G something like that. Which is recently published uh, in the um, uh, Frontier in Communication Networking. Yeah. So uh, Daniel uh, uh, was the editor who 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 had to handle this this submission. So that for that paper, that I actually showed another architecture as well. We're using we're proposing to use electro vetting, which I can have a surface. Yeah, we can have a surface, and then we can mobilize a couple of droplets. Okay, that in that way we could potentially have multiple liquid materials for antenna but on the same on the same surface but this is just a very rough idea that we believe that we can investigate but we don't yet know how exactly uh, this could be done okay we, we we have some ideas but we don't we, we haven't actually done it okay so what is the difference between antenna selection um well the uh this, the the difference is okay um well, in terms of the signal processing, there's no difference, All right? Let's put it that way. There's no difference. There's no difference. But the conventional antenna selection, you do need to have a physical antenna placed there already. So one major difference is that antenna selection, if you place the antenna so close together, you will have mutual coupling. But we don't have mutual coupling, right? If you have only one radiated element, it's just to shift across space. Even the space that you shift, you play around with, is very small. It doesn't have mutual coupling because you, you, you only have one conducting material over there. But antenna selection, you need to place the antenna already before you switch. You need to place them at fixed location. So you have mutual coupling. One second, <coughs> because if, if it's a physical antenna, you don't, you don't, you cannot place them touching each with each other. So, but in terms of signal processing, they are the same, they're identical. But if you ask, is there any difference in terms of the mathematical okay, difficulty? It does, because antenna selection, 
normally when people consider antenna selection, they consider antenna do not have a uh, correlation. Okay, they are they are uncorrelated. But in our case, we must consider spatial correlation because the one port to another port, it could be extreme, extreme small. The spatial correlation could be like the correlation coefficient could be like super nine, super nine eight, something like this. Extremely, extremely high correlation. So these will be uh, the difference. So another question from Wei Yu. Um, okay, how quickly can you switch to different ports? How do you estimate the channel strength at all the different ports within the Korean style? Well, there are two uh, questions. One is how quickly you can switch. It depends on what technology, okay, that you have, okay. If you're talking about the technology I'm showing today, for example, even that, okay. So you switch, probably the switch, the speed would be like um, the quickest that you can, you, you can switch would be in a millisecond. So in that time, okay, maybe we can question, okay, maybe it's too slow, okay, this is too slow. Because maybe two milliseconds, the channel have already changed, okay. So therefore, fast, pharma, probably no way you can achieve this. But slow, yeah, possibly, okay, yes, possibly. So therefore, the uh, switching time may be good enough for certain technology that I, I present today. Maybe it's not good enough right now, okay, if we're using this type of technology, okay. But there's also another type of free antenna technology, which uh, we will try to uh, um, we'll, we'll try to investigate, but we haven't done a lot, which is what I actually cited in the paper that I have reconfigurable pixels. This is basically like your TV screen. Have a lot of pixel, maybe thousands, thousands of pixels, okay? And then these pixels could be activated and deactivate. If you activate, for example, you activate that part, these basically create that sort of antenna in this space. Okay, but of course, these uh, you have a little bit of issue of neutral coupling. These need to be carefully investigated. But if you're using this because it is an electronic switch, you can switch as fast as you want. Okay, so for your first question, how quickly you can switch depending on the technology. If you need to switch physical materials, maybe in millisecond, we're trying to push it further. Okay, we hopefully we can push it like okay, we can switch it. Uh, uh, less than uh, a millisecond, for example, one tenth of a millisecond. This is the goal, the objective, but we don't know whether we can achieve this, but we are working towards this goal. At the moment, we can comfortably say that, okay, in millisecond, we can switch. But this may, this still may not be fast enough. But if we switch to a completely different technology, for example, we configure a pixel, we can switch as fast as, as possible. Millisecond, microsecond, because it's electronic switch, you can do this. But your second question is harder to answer actually. How do we estimate the channel strength at all the different ports within the coherence time? Maybe we cannot. That's why before I finish the talk, I show you a different problem. Like, okay, I have a large number of ports, but we don't estimate all the different ports. We don't only estimate a small subset of ports. Maybe depending on the practical uh, uh, situation, we can only measure 10 ports out of 1,000 ports. Maybe you can only measure five ports out of 1,000 ports. Then from that, how are we going to find or infer the best possible ports out of these 1,000 by knowing only a very small number of channel strength at the ports? Yeah. So that's why, yes, I'm aware that there's a difficulty in challenge like this. We may not be able to do that. So um, then it will be interesting to see yeah, we can only measure 10 ports out of 1,000. So, how, you know, how well we can, we can improve the performance. So that's why I look into using machine learning, exploiting the spatial correlation of the channel strength um, at the ports. Any okay. more questions? Yeah, I have one question, a uh, general yes, question. Uh, so uh, this is a very interesting uh, research topic. I mean, the main motivation is to explore spatial, spatial diversity in small devices which is mm. rather feasible if you use a massive MIMO, right? Mm. And what uh, would be the ideal environment for uh, we implement, I mean? Mm. Yeah, the, I, the ideal environment, for, of course, because like I said, uh, I, of course, 
the ideal environment, there are a couple of, one is, or I should say, there are a couple of attributes, okay? If you satisfy those attributes, you believe that these could provide a good environment for this type of technology. One is, okay, really, really the most important. You need to have a rich scattering environment, okay? Because rich scattering environment provide the type of diversity that your fading envelope will be able to see. Because, okay, if not, okay, if not, okay, let me show you. Okay, let's say this is your free antenna, okay? But your environment doesn't have rich scattering. That means the signal coming from directional path. So this is your desired signal. Your desired signal. This is your interference one, interference two. So no matter how you switch, you will still see the interference from those directions. You cannot, you cannot suppress the interference like that. So you will see that this is not good, okay? But if you have rich scattering, the signal would be coming from all directions. They will have a sort of ready fading envelope for the interference that you can then exploit by switching the position of the antenna. Then you can see, okay, this is the now of the interference. Okay, you go there and then interference disappear. So therefore the first and <coughs> the utmost important uh, uh, criterion is, okay, you need to have switch scattering. Okay, this is point number one. Point number two is, of course, it uh, is something to do with, you need to measure the fading envelope over the ports. Okay, what if you have a large number of ports, you need to do all this measurement. So your coherence time, hopefully should be long enough for you to do things like this. And of course, we can sort of alleviate this situation by, for example, like I said, using machine learning, only measuring a small subset of these support and then to do things, we can do that. But still, at the end of the day, we want the coherence time to be to be uh, relatively long, okay? If not, okay, the channel change too quickly. So uh, it would be very difficult for you to, uh, to, 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 to identify the good part, the best part, to take advantage of that. But of course, I believe there are some people also consider using this as switching to do, um, to actually utilize this fast fading, okay? If the fading is fast, you make it even faster by switching the position. So then you can mix it with uh, channel coding, you know, something like that. But I'm not, uh, I'm not too familiar with this concept, but I believe that there's someone is actually looking into that. Uh, but to me, still now, I believe coherence time is another important characteristic. The coherence time should be long enough so that I can use it for multiple access. So these would be the main two uh, criteria. The other, the, the, the last one I would say would be, hopefully your device should still have reasonable space. Don't give me half lambda, okay? Or one lambda, I want two lambda or more, hopefully, okay? Uh, because when we consider not fast multiple access, but slow multiple access, larger space would help us to identify, identify the, the position where your interference suffer from the defect in similar position so that you can use this position for multiple access. Okay. Okay. So certainly there are, there are more, but, but yeah. these are the main ones. Yeah, I think this is a subject that uh, there are a lot of things uh, to investigate, but uh, yes. it seems to be very promising. I mean, the main idea, and uh, hopefully uh, we can have more papers, not only from your group, but from other groups working on this. I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, my feeling is that if I see some paper, so just come out on this topic without yeah. involving us, for example, I actually are happy, happier. I probably happier than I get my own paper accepted these days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Kitty. So uh, now I think we are coming to the end of the seminar. It's uh, the once a time. So uh, I would like to thank you once again for your very interesting talk. I think it's a very inspiring theme. And personally, I enjoy it. And I will discuss with some of my colleagues here to, to check uh, the possibility we start in uh initiating uh, the research in under this topic and thank you very much yeah and hopefully uh you can if you have an opportunity to visit us here let us know 
You are welcome. Yeah, that would be that would be great because I never been to uh, Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, we'll be hosting as I told you before. We'll be hosting uh, two big uh, events uh, in November. Uh, on 60, 70 and blah blah blah. So I'll, you are, I'll try. I'll try. Yeah, welcome to join us.